I knew theater was in my blood back in junior high school. In junior high school, I waited until Wednesday to go to the library to get the arts and leisure section of the New York Times because it took that long to get to Minnesota. <laughs> My name is Jim Corey. My professional name is James Corey. Well, I'm a costume designer. I'm from Minnesota. I was given a full scholarship and a graduate assistantship to do my Master of Fine Arts degree at New York University. So I arrived there in 1970 and became a New Yorker. So my name is Evan Siskel, and I was born and raised in New York City. So Jim and I literally met on the street. I was more naive than he was because I was walking my two precious little dogs. But we got to talking and we talked for a long time and then exchanged info and two gay boys from New York. You know, we were like, you know, we loved going to the theater. We loved going to all events. And I was like, oh, finally, another gay guy who's not into like, you know, designer everything. Being a costume designer, you don't dress yourself. You, you wear a uniform. I always wore a black Lacoste, blue jeans, cowboy boots, black blue jeans, and um, I dress other people. I never dress myself. And of course, Halloween is the worst time of year for us because everybody comes to you. Um, so I never, never dressed up, ever. We had done uh, the judging of the Halloween at Hula's their costume contest a few years ago and the next morning he woke up and he said I have this great idea for next year. He loves the period of Louis XIV, the Renaissance, medieval, Victorian, I mean all of those. Well Louis is considered the father of um, ballet as we know it today. So he's also the father of fashion because that was extremely important as well and a lot of courtiers went bankrupt trying to furnish themselves in gowns that were acceptable for the court. I mean, he loves to sketch, and all of a sudden he had three sketches of Louis, and then he researched Louis's queen, Queen Maria Therese, and the next thing was seeing if we wanted to turn these into actual costumes, and he started ordering fabric. My clothes look very much like my sketches. I, and I refer to these constantly. I, I pull them out, they're, they're working Bibles for me. I, I pick the fabrics because of what I drew. And um, I pick the colors because of what I painted. What, what has ended up being is um, eight clothes that could definitely go to a ball at, at the Carnival of Venice and I would be very proud of that or even Mardi Gras, and a float in Mardi Gras. They're opulent, but they're very period, but they're still over the top opulent, but they're still very period. <laughs> Seeing them here dressed today, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> I mean, we really do feel blessed, you know, because again, I never, you know, when you're young and you have this idealistic vision of what it might be like to pair up with somebody and have that kind of a relationship, you wish that you had everything that, and we promised each other we would, and forgetting, you know, wedding vows, I mean, we really did promise each other to be that for one another. He knows that I love to watch him create and, you know, it just, it, it gives me so much joy to see him doing what he loves to do. What sorts of things are you guys looking forward to as creatives and also as a couple? Well, I don't think, I'm hoping nothing changes. There was that guy, Romeo, that we met, uh, yeah. right? No. <laughs> well, we still look, we're, we're, we're married, we're not dead, you know. But <laughs> yeah. no. 